Good morning, all you beautiful and precious souls. Life is a journey, and we're all on a soul journey here. And in 2004, my great awakening started, and it started in a moment when somebody was attacking me. And in that moment, his face changed, and all I could see was this priest having a Bible in his hand and singing the Psalter while I was being burnt alive on the stake with five Knights Templars. That set me onto a deep questioning. Why did this happen? Why was I the only woman between all these men? What had I done? And in that moment, I started my quest to find out the truth. I was after that, and as my journey unfolded, and as, as I said in 2009, I asked myself why I was born in Africa, and that resulted in my first book, Why I was born in Africa, the untold and unrecorded history of Elysium and the Lion Kingdom. But during this time, I often had vivid recalls of my lifetime in France as one of the Qatari family. And in that, I started to see myself riding a white horse and having a red dress on and I could outride any men and I was safeguarding what I promised my father to do under oath to safeguard the most precious of all documents, the most precious of all manuscripts because at that stage the whole of Landoc and Aquitonia was under siege as the Third Crusade was launched against um, the Qatar families. I saw myself often in desperate situations where I was literally hanging on the edge of cliffs with my hands and trying to, to, to sort of get down on ledges where I could actually take some of the documents that were tied to my back to safeguarding. I saw myself with Templars because they were my cousins because the same Qatari families were also the same Templar families that were the founding members of the Templars at that time. Safeguarding what we could, and it wasn't just documents and things, it was also other things and it, it, uh, objects, but it was also people that we were trying to save in a desperate way because thousands of people were being burnt alive by the church, the Roman church at that stage. and. There was, there was a deep, deep, deep knowing that we had to preserve what we could preserve for the greater of humanity at that time. And then, but I never sort of really thought of going to France at that stage because I had to start life from scratch again and rebuild my life. But in, in, then later on, I was sitting in Cape Town doing energy work in a great way through Africa, as I've been doing in the, since um, I resigned my job in 2008 and really started doing my work with full out and full time. And I actually started to, to at that moment, be asked to go and clear France. And I had no idea what I was, well, why that was happening. And it was soon after that I was told to actually get out a map of France and started to draw energy lines in France. And I also I started to see what that area was all about and why that they had to safeguard what they should safeguard at that time, even as my soul memory bank started triggering. And then in 2014, I was told you have to go to France. I had no idea how I would do that. I was also told that I need to go into seminars in France and exactly near that place where I originally came from. As it would happen, I always say, if you want me to go somewhere, then you see that I get there. And things started to move. Things started to work out. With that, I got more and more recalls. I, I actually started tapping down things. I worked with the energy fields of France remotely. And then in 2016, I, I had my seven seminars that orchestrated came into form and being, and I was on my way to France. When I landed in France and I got to my hotel room, the first thing that happened was that Mary Magdalene appeared to me in my hotel room. And she was with me that whole journey in France. 
because she actually was born in the south of France to one of the royal Jewish families who also had property in Palestine, well, in, in, in Israel, what we call Israel now. In that, her, her story started to unfold alongside with my own story. And on that, I was also told to follow exactly the lines that I drew on the atlas. At one stage, Christina, who was kindly helping me to get around France as I could not speak French, <laughs> uh, I also, she said, well, can't we change this around? And the answer was no, you stick to the plan as it was, because that is how you need to do the work. So we were not just driving through France, we were doing energy work as we were stopping. And the next stop was also Orleans, where I connected deeply with Joan of Arc. And it was in there that I started to see how that all culminated to the south of France. So the, 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 the connections were coming out on all play, in all forms and ways. But at the same time, I was starting to tap into Avalon, to the, 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 the civilization that was a third after the Lion Kingdom. It was the... The, 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 the civilization of the Druids in their highest ways in the seventh dimensional state originally. Now my book goes into this journey as it unfolds. It's not only the journey into the Qataris and their whole he legacy that they left and what happened there and also with the Templars but also something much more ancient and far-reaching so that you can understand where all of this came from. Because the mystery schools in France were actually much older than even Mary Magdalene, it went, and, and even the Qataris, it went much, much thousands and millions of years beforehand. Now, this book brings you that journey. It is recorded as it happens. It's my journal entries. It's my sketches that I made. It is my pictures that I took there with my camera. And what is so amazing is how the camera actually picked up what I was sensing. And then, then when I started downloading my photos, I would suddenly see, oh my goodness, look what the camera has, pick, has picked up. This happened in a place where we were driving uh, to Kuisa, and I suddenly said, as we were driving, I've never been there in my life, I've never been in France before. I said, well, oh, there's a Templar holding here. There's a bridge, there's a sort of like a, a, a bridge that goes over the Ord River, and there is a Templar holding there. And I saw myself riding with Templars over this bridge. And, she, and Christina looked at me and she said, how did you know? I said, well, I just know. And as we went over, and sure enough, there it was, we went over the bridge. And as we stopped there at the Templar holding, we just didn't have time to actually investigate that day. I said, you know what? A Templar was murdered here. And I just took out that camera and I started photographing. And then we went on to Kuisa because we had a meeting there. And the next minute when I, at her, like that night, downloaded the pictures, lo and behold, the camera had captured something there. It had captured a man and a horse. That was just the beginning of a story as it is unfolding. It is a story not only of the Qatars. It is a story of what they held for humankind and what the Templars helped them with to preserve. It is a story of Avalon and their legacy. But more than this, it's a story of the pure souls that incarnate time and time again to hold the light steady for humankind in times of great darkness. It is a book unlike any other. It will trigger the keys and codes in your, in your soul in a very, very deep way, as all my work does. 
I'm just an instrument. But it's my deep felt and my heartfelt wish that if you actually read this book, that it will help you not only to heal in the highest degrees, but also to find that the power of love is present in omni ways, omnipresent ways everywhere. This is a time of great healing of the woundedness of humanity, but it's also the time where we ascend into the new earth. And this book is basically because I had to go through the energy work that I did there. Great healing, because when great catastrophes and great um, things happen like happened in Languedoc and in Occitania, his true name was Occitania, they had their own language. What really happened there was with this incredible homicide that happened there, the greatest one ever. That whole trauma sinks into the land. And it was a releasing of the trauma of the land, but also the trauma of the collective of humankind. And that is the prophecy of the Qataris have come into form and being, as all the Qatari souls who were involved then and the Templars have returned. To see humanity with those of the Illumined Ones and the Shining Ones through into the new earth and to bring into completion what was begun years ago, many, many millions and billions of earth years ago. This is a beautiful book. As you can see, Monsegur is right there in the main picture. It is at Monsegur that we had the most incredible moment with the seminar group in between the seminars or seven seminars and a beautiful group of souls, 30 of them. And we went to Monsegur and a miracle happened that day. And I want to share this miracle with you today because that is just one of the miracles that happened on that journey of remembrance, but not just remembrance, but also of the future that was there that I did in 2000 and 16 September. I went with a group and first we gathered sort of on the slope where the great monument is. I say it is an altar. And I said to the group, I said, every one of you will be called in the different direction. And you will just know exactly where you need to go because your soul remembers and that's where you need to have an experience today. And I myself went round a corner and I found an ancient path that I knew I so often not only traveled with my horse on horseback, but also on foot. It was a secret entrance. And in that moment that I remembered that, this chant was just transmitted through me. The miracle there is that I had lost my voice when I taught English and in the Qatar and in uh, beforehand. And I could not sing anymore, although I've always had a wonderful voice, a soprano. And there I was for 20 minutes having this chant transmitted through me. And the miracle was that everybody heard it, but not only that. There were some cows, some white cows, on, uh, over, across the river on the other side, on the slope, and they were starting to ring their bells with a song. And when I stopped, I knew that I had to gather the group around the altar and that we had to sing this ancient chant. It is a chant of healing, but it's also a chant of gnosis and a chant of the, to connect you to the higher consciousness, but also to the power of love for its heart opening. And one by one, we, we st I started singing it with Carol, who come from the uh, uh, Channel Islands, and she had received the same message because she was working with the dolmens there. And in that, one by one, everybody silently came from wherever they were, and we stood in a circle around this, and this chant was sang again after all these hundreds of years. And there was... De absolute silence there. 
the people who were there because there were lots of tourists that day, they just stood in silence. The children sat themselves down. A flock of heron flew over. And in that very moment, I saw the last of the Qatari, the last seven, uh, sorry, the last 200 of them, singing and chanting as they went into their death. They were filled with joy. Their heart was so open with love for humanity. I had, was deeply, deeply moved. And that picture has been with me through all these years. And I, my greatest quest is that the power of love will be returned to every one of us. Because the Qatars had a gospel of love. And they said that everyone in truth is one. And they practiced that. They were the pure ones. And those pure ones have all returned now. And they're helping us now through this immense ascension process into the new earth and into our new light body form. This book is a book unlike any other that you've ever read before. It goes deep, it goes on many levels. But on the other hand, I will always remember Christina when we, when we were on this and I started downloading the, 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 the information and the visions would come. She says, oh my goodness, I so love playing Sherlock Holmes with you. <laughs> I thank Christina for her generous and most loving help. This book is also dedicated to her and to all those who helped with the editing process and also my publisher for bringing this all into form and being. It is a beautiful A4 book. You can get it in hardcover and in softcover. And it's beautifully illustrated with my sketches and all the photos that I took on my journey. And more than this, it also brings the story of Mary Magdalene, the Qatars and the Templars and Avalon and also Joan of Arc because she gave me her true story. She was not a peasant girl. She was actually a high initiate. So this book is something that I dedicate to humankind with great love so that the woundedness will heal and is healing and we experience the power of love in the highest and most profound way. Because in truth we are all one. And in truth there is only love. This book is my gift of love to humanity. May you be blessed. And may the power of love expand your heart and your consciousness. I thank you for being on this planet with me at this time. Thank you. What a beautiful, beautiful world we have. <laughs>